Welcome, everybody. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of It's Just Business. I'm your host, Jonah Barnes-Moore, a.k.a. Busy J, and this is my co-host, who is also my mother. Ina Barnes, a.k.a. Busy E. Busy E, there it is. See, she switches up on you guys. She's trying to build anticipation. Anyway, if you watch other episodes, then you would know exactly what we're referring to. Is that her intro? But thank you guys for tuning in. We have a very important, I want to say, and relevant topic for you today. It's one that affects everybody. If you're just an individual, a consumer, or you are actually a business, we are going to talk about trade war. Trade or wars. The potential trade war. It's not a trade war yet. It looks like a trade war. It sounds like a trade war, but apparently they're not calling it a trade war out. yet. But we're going to see. So, what we're talking about today is how a trade war affects you as a consumer and you as a business, right? So let's hop right into it. What is a trade war? A trade war is pretty much where you're competing with another country um, to negotiate how trade is done between you two, right? Goods and services, Goods right? and services, yeah. right? So you have, now we're going to be talking imports and exports, right? So how much does the company bring in? I mean, the country bring in and how much does the country um, send out for productivity purposes? When you're in a trade war, you pretty much try to stifle the other ones to the other country or the rivaling country to get your agenda pushed across or to reach your goal, right? And so as we all well know, Right now, it's between the U.S. and China, right? So the U.S. Okay. and China are at each other's necks about trade war. And let's get into what that's about before we start getting what into is the that statistics, about? right? So what is the goal of that the U.S. is trying to um, accomplish. accomplish by applying all these tariffs on China, right? Because, by the way, the current administration is applying tariffs. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, they are applying so they're tariffs. they're applying tariffs. And yes. what is a tariff? A tariff is pretty much a tax on an import from a certain country. Or like um, we also, not just uh, China this year, right? You can put, um, they've, the U.S. has put tariffs on their, tra their um, trade partners that are right next to them, which is Mexico and Canada. So they can put tariffs on certain goods. It could be steel. It could be iron or soybeans, whatever the government computers, yeah computer yeah. chips you know whatever the government decides that's what you can tariff and put an extra import tax or an export tax on these goods so that's ultimately in an effort to stifle the company the country the country's import power and export power with one another right okay. to get your agenda across right but with the US and China the ultimate goal is to get China to adopt really different business practices. Okay. But what that requires is that China fundamentally change who they are as a country, right? Because um, for those of you who don't know, China, the way business is done in China is completely different than the way the business done is, is, is done in the U.S. and more democratic, free market economy countries, right? So... The in the free market economy, pretty much businesses operate free of government. There's only a few industries that are actually regulated, like, you know, the housing is regulated and there's a few other ones. But in China, the government has monopolistic power over every single business that is in China. Right. So whether you're the retailer of a small mom and pop store yeah. or if you're selling cars or exactly, computers exactly. or whatever, you have to go through the government and the government is controlling and regulating every single thing of what you can and what you cannot do. Okay. Right. And so that's why the most powerful people in the U.S. are like, you know, major business owners, you know, the Jeff Bezos, the Mark Zuckerberg, the people that have uh, are heads of these huge companies, right? In China, it's the government officials because a lot of government officials can influence the like how you operate as a business. They have power over your business. So you'll see a lot of senators and a lot of congressmen on boards of these companies because they all ultimately make the law and they operate the terms that you can govern, like that your industry can... Um, will be governed will by. Will be governed, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So... That's a fundamental difference in the U.S. and China. And so what the U.S. is trying to do is to get them to adopt this free market economy, ultimately, so 
the U.S. can have access to that market, right? Because you can't have a business in China without knowing somebody in the government or establishing some kind of relationship. Within the U.S., it's like everybody can just come over here, start their own business, build their way up, and then have a significant amount of power. Capitalism. Yeah, capitalism. But it's not like that in China. You have to know a government official. You have to be make sure that you're good and cleared. You have an established relationship. They want to know what you're doing, what um, what what you're gonna do, what's your plan, how you're gonna do it within our country. When as opposed Who's to the in U.S. Your network. Yeah, Who exactly. With? Who yeah. are you doing business with? All they want to know everything and anything, right? Right. So ultimately, the current administration is trying to get the Chinese to adopt this free market economy. And the Chinese are very a br- proud country, and they're a large country, and they're like, why would we want to change the way that we're doing things? We're pretty successful. Exactly. You have to think, the Chinese come from a communist background, right? So they're all about government being in control of every aspect of you know the lives of their, the people that are there. They've, they've made progression into opening up their borders, you know, kind of adopting a free market economy sl- somewhat in some ways, but not entirely. They're not And gonna... even though we're in a free economy, even though we're a capitalistic society, our government does control pretty much everything that we do. Right. But you just don't feel it. Yeah. And and you don't have to go through the US government necessarily in the same kind of way right. that you would have to go through in China. Yeah. And you know, it it's interesting because the dynamic between it's more like businesses have way more power here, even though the government has control with businesses in the U.S. We pretty the government is pretty much manipulated by big business right. via lobbying. Right. Yeah. Businesses term, can businesses can influence and, yeah. and, and, and exert power over the government. Exactly. That's not the that's way it not works how it works in China. <laughs> no, <laughs> the Chinese government's like, no, we own all we own all factors of power so and so that's what really is the biggest um goal of this trade war okay is that the current administration is trying to get um china to adopt this free market economy approach now this has been painted under the rhetoric of the current administration that um we're trying to Get uh, the American jobs back we, from these. Uh, and we like that idea. Yeah. Let's bring jobs back. Bring jobs back put to folks America. To work. You know, Yay. put people to work. And we're also trying to protect our intellectual property because one of the things that is interesting and it's very strategic is that um, if a company in China, right, starts up something or purchases a company in the US, then they have access to all that intellectual property. So if they continue to establish companies in the U.S. and also buy companies in the U.S., that all the intellectual property, so your patents, your trademarks, you know, your trademarks copyrights. yeah, all copyrights, all that intellectual property go is now being funneled to the Chinese government. It goes. It belongs to the right? government. It belongs to the government. And so that's what the current administration is trying to fight against. They're saying, no, you're exporting, you're pretty much having a brain gate to the Chinese government, right. and that's not fair. So you can't so, come to America and suck out our brain trust, and then you own the rights to all of that brain trust. Exactly, exactly. And then it makes it harder for Americans to compete. Very strong rhetoric, very strong context, right? So we can understand that, hey, these are two things that are really important that should be addressed. But how you address them is very important. So yeah. the current administration's um, decision was is to, to impose tariffs, impose all these taxes on China, right? So they impose tariffs, they mm-hmm. impose taxes. Yeah. And what does that mean? And what does that mean? What so does that mean? We'll start with a few statistics based on um, the United States and China, just to give you kind of we're kind of you, this where so you can weigh the opponents, the, the way the who's at each other's necks right now, because it is really the two titans in the world are literally having the it United out. States and China. Right. So importers, exporters. Exactly. So pretty much the United States is the world's largest importer at two point one two trillion dollars. Consumers. They were large consuming company. I mean, country. I'm always saying company. That's OK. A large consumption country. Now, China if you can guess, is obviously the world's largest exporter at $2.27 trillion. You have your consumers and then you have your sellers. Yeah, you have, yeah, you have your suppliers, suppliers and then you and have consumers. your buyers, right? So yeah. the number one 
consumer, the U.S., the number one exporter, China. And so we're literally having it out at each other's necks, right? We're going at it like, no, you guys need to do this. It's not fair, blah, 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 blah. China's like, we're not backing down. Like, we're going to run things the way we want to run it. We, ha- we export, mo- we have the most production in the, in the world. In the world. In the world, right? We export to the world. And guess who's the second importer, right? China. It's China's the, so they have a growing market. Obviously, China's established itself as a world economic power, which they weren't years ago. And it's amazing to see China's growth. Now they're number two in imports, right? So they are now slowly becoming more of a consumer. So you're saying they're the exporter and importer? Yeah, pretty Is much. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, they, yeah, exactly, exactly. But their imports are still significantly lower There's than the lower US. than, than yeah. ours. The U.S. But, is okay. at, so look, this is how you know the U.S. is a major consuming country, right? So China's number two in imports. In imports. The United States is number one in imports, right? So Imports. The United consumer. States imports 2.1 one trillion, right? So you need my business, right? You you need but me. Look at this. China is number two in imports, but they only import one point two three trillion. Okay. So there's a trillion dollar gap between the number one importer and the number two importer, right? So even still, if they since uh, the U.S. is putting trade tariffs on Chinese imports. There, you, we don't import nearly as much. I mean, China doesn't import nearly as right. much as the U.S. does right. by a trillion dollars, right? So their margins for import or export are, lar- are way larger than the U.S. is. So this trade war, it, even though media may try to say that where the U.S. is winning and the U.S. is, you know, China's really feeling it, but you have to think that the, the China exports way more than they import so they produce way more than they consume and that's a winning mo- model right the u.s we consume way more than we produce that is not a sustainable model GDP. that is not a good model when you think of it as a whole country right so when this trade war comes into effect it really makes you think like well what's the end game which obviously is to adopt Uh, get China to adopt the free market economy, but if they're strong in their exports and they don't import nearly as much, it's kind of an uphill battle, right? It is totally an uphill battle. It's definitely an uphill battle. So let's take a look at, now that you kind of have a big macro, broad broad macro vision of the U.S. and China and where they stand as economic powers with U.S. being the number one importer, China being the number one exporter, now let's dig into what actually is being exported, right? What are what's the biggest exports that China sends to the US and what are the <laughs> biggest imports that the US has, you know? So, on a world scale, right? This is all all exports from China. China's largest exports are computers, obviously, right? That's at 173 billion export value, broadcasting equipment, so that's like, you know, satellites, telephone, telephones, all that stuff. Um, that's 7.1% of China's exports to the world. Then they have telephones, obviously. They're actually, Chinese companies are actually uh, securing a major um, market share in the world with their Chinese telephones. Um, they have a huge holding in India and all these other countries that we don't think about. Not in the U.S., but in the world scale, China's becoming a major market player in cell phones. Just a quick side note. Um, Then obviously integrated circuits and office machine parts. Those are their largest. Those are their top five exports, right? Yeah. Just look at your stuff and it's made in China. Yeah. Everything is pretty much made Made in in China. China. Made in China. For certain types of of yeah, now let's go to the U.S. What are their major exports? The U.S. major exports is right now gas because we've actually discovered that we, we have a lot of um, natural mm-hmm. gas within the land. And so um, this has and the technology has allowed us to actually export to other countries. Um, this one I found so interesting is that one of like, sorry, the largest one is planes, helicopters and and or spacecraft. Boeing. Yeah. So Boeing pretty much is a, one of the major exports. Helicopters, planes, and spacecraft. Yeah. So has anyone heard 
Star Wars. We want to build yeah. a, a, a. We have to think NASA. What was the and Elon current Musk. administration's thing? They wanted to build a military for a space. What was that thing? It oh, was. I don't some, know. It was something. Taking over space. Yeah. Like, you know. Like John F. Kennedy and like, all that like stuff. Like space. Yeah. Um, the, another, the second largest is cars, right? So cars. That's an obvious export. Um, vehicle parts, aircraft parts. Refined petroleum. Yeah. Package me, med, medicaments. It's funny that, that gold is on here. Yeah. What was what was you what were we looking at? I'm looking here. Uh, package medicaments, human animal. Package. I don't medical medical stuff whatever okay. refined petroleum um these are major the major u.s exports now let's go look at who now we're looking i wish i could show you this guys um it i'm on atlas.media.mit.edu it shows you pretty much all of the economic activity of a country so it shows you their gdp it shows you their exports their imports it gives you the numbers and breakdowns of where it's going right so now we're going to look at the largest destinations right so the largest import destinations for the u.s by a landslide guess who it is it's china so by that you're saying that the large so when we actually go into what the u.s exports imports what we import yeah what we import what we import it's it comes from 21 percent of all imports in the u.s come from china from china at and its estimated value is 436 billion dollars worth of imports come from china so now this is where it affects businesses and the consumer right because if i'm putting tariffs on china who is our largest importer that cost now goes to businesses and the consumer it goes to businesses because depending on what is being imported it forces them to pass on the cost of that so purchasing in bulk or whatever from china to that cost consumer. goes up and it passes it on to the consumer right and so if this cost is passed on to the consumer and the economy's not doing so strong, which they which they're trying to portray that it is doing very so, strong. So, so basically, there's consumer confidence. You think that you think the economy is going very well, and you think, okay, cost of living is not that high, but my co my income has gone up, my net value, right. blah blah blah, has gone up. When the current administration says, okay, we're going to put tariffs on our economy is healthy, mm -hmm. so we're going to put tariffs on here. Now the consumer will eat that cost. Exactly. The consumer will say the economy is healthy. Everybody's working. The yeah. median income is high. And slowly, Everything's, the prices GDP are is rising. Good. So, so you, know? you know, I might pay a little more for a car. Exactly, and that's what eats at your margins and eats at your pocket, right? Because now the the businesses they have to they they naturally have to pass it on. To, to you. you. They're not going to operate at losing, trying to make sure that we at least still have sales. They're like, no, we have to cut costs, right? And so that's another thing for businesses, right? They say now the sales don't go up and they just really dwindle down because the prices went up. Then that's when they start looking internally to cut costs. And that's when you get mm -hmm. to the point of letting people go. Um, trying to find different suppliers else in the elsewhere in the right. world. Where else can we right? get these goods? Where and can services? we get these goods and services yeah. somewhere else? So, this is why when just a simple tax has this ripple effect for both sides, right? Because now, on top of that, and let's go to the business perspective a little bit. Say I have a deal with China. I have a ten-year deal with China that we established in um, 2015. Three years later, there's a trade war we immediately have to renegotiate that deal. And that deal could have been sweet for both of us, but now, because of these trade tariffs, they're both going to be looking out for each other. For, yeah, for themselves. Yeah, for themselves, yeah. right? They're not going to be looking out for each other. They're going to be looking out for themselves, saying like, hey, what we got to we got, yeah, we got to redo we got to redo this because we wanted at this price not knowing that this would happen. So, yeah. and that ultimately can damage the relationship because now you guys are at an impasse with you know somebody who you've had production deals with for years. Mm -hmm. So now businesses have to deal with that. That's something that because of the old, the overarching goal of this current administration, 
is now resulting in you losing relationships in a market. Say you're just now establishing a market in China. Now you probably have to renegotiate that mm -hmm. and formulate a losing deal mm -hmm. because of a trade war and because of these tariffs. And oh, by the way, you're passing that expense onto your consumer, your customer right. base. And by the way, if the economy is very healthy, which is what the current administration is telling us, all of those gains that you made in unemployment and GDP and, right, and uh, how away. much you're being paid, you're you're spending that. Now yeah. you you really haven't gained anything. You're still exactly. at G ground zero. Exactly. You haven't been able to build up your it own. It all wealth. goes back to paying for the tariffs. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why it's not really good for business, right? Yeah. And so it, it, it's not. It's not. No. Right. And so. On the flip side, too, um, let's look at China, who's their largest um, importer, right? Let's see. China's largest importer. Well, yeah, if I can get out this map. Don't freeze on me now. Here. Okay. China's largest importer by country um, is not the U.S. is... Oh, yeah, the U.S. is here. They put it way over here on the right. So the United States, they import about 9.9% of their um, goods and services from the United States at $122 billion. Now compare that to the $463 billion that pretty much the U.S. is dependent upon for goods and services in the U.S. versus the 9.9%, $122 billion, right? China's not really too dependent on the U.S., right? They're not, they're not really like for the imports, it's like... Okay, we need a few things from you. And I think that actually is mainly gas. I think that's what it is. So yeah. it's like, yeah, we need you for gas, but not everything else. You right. know, where China it's like it could be your clothes, your your phone, your cars, your appliances, your the chips in your phone, the cameras, the lenses, like, you know, all of these different things that are being imported into the US really have effect on consumers' day-to-day -day lives. Like the gas, it's like, eh, we can, you know, we have scientists here too. Yeah. We can find alternative methods. Yeah, we're talking gas, cars, you know, right. airplanes, helicopters, mm -hmm. spacecraft. Yeah, yeah. Like, we, like we don't need too many new planes. We're not planes. trying to go to space. Yeah, we're not trying to go to space. We, we're all right. And so 9.9 in the U.S., but then you have to look that they're pretty much the same. They have the same amount with South Korea and Japan at 9.8%, 120 billion, 9.8% with South Korea at Yeah, because when you said that, I, I, my answer was going to be Japan. I was like, Japan is their Yeah, yeah, importer. exactly. Yeah. But it's just okay. by 0.1%. So really, they have they have a pretty, like, I want to say diversified range of where they import their products, country their goods and services. You know, country-wise. Yeah, country-wise. As yeah, far so, as countries go. Yeah, yeah, as far as countries go, yeah, they're, they are pretty diversified, diversified. in where they, get, where they get it from, you know, as opposed to the U.S. where one out of every five product is going to be from, from China. China. You know, it's like, no, it might be from South Korea, it might be from Japan, it might be from Germany, it might be from the U.S., you know. So when you look at it in terms of this, you have to think of how much of an impact can the, we really have on China's economy by you know tariffs. importing all these tariffs if they don't even import that much they're we're like they're putting the us is in a competitive um space right when it comes to china's market because china the china market is brand new with a billion people and people actually spending money every country's trying to get in on that market so as a when you think about the power dynamics the us really is trying to compete to get into that market as opposed to being dependent on uh, the Chinese imports that the U.S. Is actually actually is. It's not a dependency. It's more of they're trying to compete. So China has the advantage when you think of the imports, right? right? So it, it kind of boggles your mind. It's like, well, if they, you know, let's take a look at China overall. It, it kind of seems like a losing battle, right? Because if they, they're the number one exporter, right. they're the number two importer, but right. not nearly as much as the U.S. In, imports, right. right? It's a trillion dollar difference. And on top of that, they get, their, they get their goods and services from at least five other countries. Why would the U.S. be trying to, you know, pretty much throw rocks at the country, you know, and expect to Why do you think that is? get Why, into what, the market? What is, what is the argument for that? Um... I can't, I can't really, from a business perspective, I can't really formulate one. I, I think it's more of like, a, it's a pride thing, trying to say, like, trying to make sure assert. that, yeah, to assert yourself, like, hey, we're not tolerating, tolerating this from you guys for whatever reason, right? But really, 
um, when you look at it, the trying to like start a war with them and poke a bear at a new market that you're trying to get into, which you're going to have to get into if you want to remain a world, a world power, if you want to sustain your wealth as an economic power, you're going to have to get into it, get into the Chinese market. Okay. But starting a trade war isn't the best way to do that. It should be more through the diplomatic approach where, you know, you try to yeah. establish yourself. How can we start a pipeline of businesses to China? Yeah, and I know? would be interested to hear what other people's thoughts are around that. I would be interested to hear why starting a trade war is a good idea in, in right. imposing these tariffs and taxes. I'd like to hear the argument for that right. because it would be interesting because I think it would be worth a dialogue to fully understand the argument for that mm -hmm. because I think there is an argument to be made around that. Yeah. I just am not prepared to make it right now. And I, and <laughs> yeah, I, and exactly. I Exactly. You are well ready to defend the exact opposite. I mean, yeah. So I'd be curious to hear what people think about Definitely, you know the because, idea of trade wars and what yeah, their thoughts are. Yeah, and it's yeah. and it's something that's interesting. But now yeah, when it's I very interesting. I can see like this is one point I can see of why we would how we kind of have power as the US in this situation, because obviously China's largest exporter is the United States, right? So nineteen percent of their exports are to the United States. So you can see that, you know, the US US tactic is really to okay, we're your largest we're your largest market. So leverage our position. Yeah, we got we have to leverage yeah, our position. We're your largest market. If you, you don't need do what us. we you, say, you know, then, it's yeah. like if all of a sudden your your biggest customer goes away. Yeah, and where they're are like, you? no, you need to do this or else we we're going to cut off your market share with yeah. us. You know, you're not going to be able to reach our market and so them being the 19 percent, they can kind of leverage that right hey. and then their second largest obviously is hong kong which people get really confused hong kong is actually not china they kind of are like an independent state yeah so um by proximity obviously is hong kong at 11 percent japan at 6.6 percent .6 and 4.4 percent at germany right those are their largest export destinations so now you can kind of see the U.S. position like, OK, we're we're the largest we're your largest market. Like, you know, so what yeah. do you really want to do? Like if you if you want us to continue to be your largest market, you're going to have to do X, Y, Z, which is adopt adopt the free market economy, make it more fair. Stop taking our intellectual property, you know, and offer, you know, um, jobs to help us offer jobs to our people. Yeah. Do you want to right? lose Apple as a client? Do you want to lose Microsoft? Do you right. want to lose but Amazon see, as a client? That's, that's what the United States is saying. But, Do you want to lose this client? Right, but here's Not the, that we're the Apples yeah. or the... But you see what I'm saying. Yeah, you're well, big, obviously, you're, yeah, they're you're here. Big, they're here in the U.S. Your cash cow. Yeah. Your cash cow. Do you really want to lose your cash cow? Yeah, but at the end of the day, it's a little different because now we see these businesses are like... What is the U.S. doing? We're not. We're, we don't want to be a part of this. So, but it's interesting because a good case to look at is Harley Davidson, right? Yeah. So Harley Davidson um, was is really affected by the tariffs because the first of tariffs, one of the first tariffs that was implemented by the U.S. on China was a steel tariff, right? And so they obviously make motorcycles requires a lot of steel. Mm -hmm. um, Harley Davidson was considering opening a factory in the U.S in order to, you know, make production a lot faster and a lot cheaper. But ever since these tariffs came in, they're like, oh, wait a minute. Like, I don't want to, we don't want to do that because we're going to lose a lot of sales because it's going to force us to up our prices. So what they actually did was, and, tr and Trump administration actually attacked, um, I think Trump actually attacked Harley Davidson directly by yeah. saying like, "Oh, yeah, this is un American because how un American yeah. of you to do this?" And yeah. they, because they decided that they were going to move their major factory to the UK because it would be cheaper for them to produce, right? right. So that is how businesses are kind of in the US. And by the way, Harley Davidson is pretty synonymous with baseball and apple pie. I mean, you know, that's an American yeah, company. Yeah, you yeah. can't attack Harley Davidson. You just can't. Exactly. You can't. Exactly. You shouldn't. If you so, can't. Yeah, and so shouldn't. it's enforced it Harley Davidson to be like, you know, kind of forget what you guys are doing and your agenda. We need to. Yeah. Uh, You're not going to sure put us we, out of business. Yeah, exactly. You're not putting us out of business. We're not going We're going to go to the UK and then we're going to develop yeah. there. We didn't you know, go to China. We yeah, exactly. Yet, exactly. We went to like a neutral ground. Be sustainable. Yeah, we went to a neutral ground to produce. So that's the difference between like the lever that's why the leverage isn't as strong with the United States, because, yes, we are the largest um, export destination for China. 
But these companies have the freedom to move. They're like, you know, we can actually do operations wherever internationally. Say mm -hmm. they have a relationship. You have one in Hong Kong or you have one in Japan with another major exporter of, um, you know, China. And yeah. you can go and st strategically get to these places if you have the capital, obviously, if you're a large enough company. But you have more freedom to operate, you know. So the United States is leverage is like kind of, you know, they is it's strong. On that on a macro level but when you dig down into the context of it china could just approach these companies and cut them deals and say hey yeah. look if we can still maintain our whatever you know i'll give you a discount at this and that yeah. and then work it that way so you don't really have to be fall victim to these tariffs or you know whatever we can still have our relationship keep going forward right right so that's why the leverage really if you look at it it tilts to china's side but the rhetoric in the United States and by the, this current administration is that, you know, oh, we're winning. Don't worry about it. Our economy's strong. We're affecting their economy more than they're affecting ours. Right. Blah, 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 blah. Wages are up. Yeah. Unemployment is down. Exactly. So you have nothing to worry about. But really, if you take a deeper dive into it, you know, you should be as a consumer and as a business, you should be trying to create a unique strategy. You should be trying to figure out, OK, how can I leverage my assets in this current economy, in this current situation, with these current situations going on with the trade and the tariffs, yeah. how can I make sure that I'm okay and I'm good? And that may require a little bit of innovation, right? That may require you doing things, solving a problem in a unique way. Right. Because Harley Davidson had to make a hard decision, right? And so they had to decide, okay, well, if, if this tariff, these trade tariffs are going on, it's better for us to go to the UK. What about the company that can't, isn't international and can't actually go over to the UK? You're, you now have to be forced to internally innovate to figure out how, what's the best way for me to come out of this situation, yeah. come out of this uncertainty on top. How can yeah. I leverage my internal assets? Yeah. What strategy should I pick? And that's why it's important to innovate during these times and always understand what's going on in the bigger picture. Right. You have to have you have to have your your chief operating officer specifically looking at corporate governance. Mm -hmm. You have to have a relationship with the government, with the US government yeah. and other governments. So whoever you have to have people in place, a person specifically or a function in place that has those relationships that understands what's happening with the US government and other governments in other countries that are impacting the way that you do business, specifically as it relates to governmental policies, specifically where we're mm -hmm. talking about today, tariffs and taxes. Exactly. You have to have someone in your organization who's not a not only aware and looking at and has relationships with, but is an innovator. They right. can think forward beyond what the current administration in the country is doing and other current administrations are doing, but what the future holds for your organization from this perspective. When exactly. a trade war is on the horizon or is actually in effect, how is your organization going to be able to adjust or exactly. address exactly. what happens when this happens? And if you're a smaller business or a startup, it's you. You have to be that person. You have to be yeah. the person that's looking at this, right? Because you should see this as kind of like the weather, right? The weather. The, this is the yeah. the trade war and whatever the political tensions um, when it comes specifically to the economy and business. You have to look at that as the weather, right? Mm -hmm. Because for me, I'm going to relate to sports. Like if you play outside sport, right? Rugby, football, baseball, golf or whatever. Tennis. Tennis. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, sometimes tennis. But you have to be you have to know the weather the day of the game right because if it's you know really muddy on the football field if you're playing on the grass field and it's really muddy you got to understand okay i can't be making all these moves i can't move the same that i used to because the ground isn't going to support all these moves i don't want to be slipping right. around you know or you but know but you know what the, it's, when you talk about sports i want to say this too as the individual sportsman mm -hmm. as the athlete Right. I would say you need to know what the weather means, whether you're indoor or outdoor, because that weather is going to affect your bones, your muscles, oh, your yeah. joints, when it's cold outside, your skin. Woo. It's going to affect everything about if you walk out and it's 102 degrees outside and you're used to playing in 80 degrees or 60 yeah, degrees. Exactly. You personally. Exactly. As the athlete, you have to be prepared for what the weather so, brings. Exactly. So be that's aware. your individual, your individual course or mm -hmm. path as well as your corporate path. Exactly. Right. So, as so an you athlete, have to yeah. be aware of the economic climate. How is that going to affect be me personally? Be aware of the political climate. And my team or my country or my corporation. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so 
that's why we wanted to do this today because talk about the trade wars. Talk yeah. about the trade wars and how it affects you as an individual and as a business because you have to know what's going on in order for you to yeah. make the best decisions in order for you to make um, to have your strategy be adaptable with yeah. the times, right? Because if you're not sure about where you're going to go in these times, it's a good time to start strategizing and it's innovating. It's never too late to start you know, looking at it. It's never too late. These are uncertain. These are really uncertain yeah. times, especially with this trade war. We don't know where it's going to go. We just right. know what's happened. We know the statistics between the countries, but the end game, how it's all going to end and how it's all going to play out, it's very uncertain, but it's best that you start preparing for that. You all, Like we always say, you need to stay ready so you, you don't, don't have, have to, to get ready. <laughs> yeah. All right? Yeah. <laughs> so you need to start innovating. If you don't know what's going on, you need to think forward, think ahead, solve this problem in a unique way. You right. know, whether that's, okay, how can I make sure that these trade wars, how can I make sure that if I have to pass the price of my product onto my consumer, how can I make sure that I don't have to start cutting costs at the expense of my employees, right? How can I do that? Yeah. These are li- and you may think this is just a strategic, it's an innovation. It's, you have to solve it in a unique way, especially yes. if you don't have all the tools that a larger company has, mm-hmm. you definitely have to, you know, get creative, get unique, start thinking outside the box. How can I make sure internally that we're solid, we're stable, we're sustainable? Sustainability. So that well, no matter what comes at us, we will be okay, you know? And that's what JBM Consultants helps you do at the end of the day. We do that that's why through we're facilitation, here. innovation, and obviously education, which yep. was mainly the focus of our podcast today, was to ed- educate you on the political and economical weather, what's going on outside your door, yes. even though you can't see it. Yeah, you, we, we got which our way radars is the wind on. Blowing? Is, is, there a tra- is there a trade war? Yeah, a and so... This is something also to pay attention to. So the trade war, they're, they're saying it's not a full-blown trade war. I'm like, this sounds like a, a trade war to me, it's similar to the Cold War back in the days, you know, where like, oh, we're doing the nuclear bombs. This is sort of some, a, a trade war, right? It just hasn't gotten to the point where alliances have been formed where it's like, okay, anybody doing business with China now has a tax on the U.S. Or anybody, and from China's perspective, anybody doing business with the U.S. now has a tax on, yeah. you know, it hasn't gotten to that point. But as far as the head to head, the boxing battle goes, it's 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 been a war. It's been there. a brawl. Yeah. So it's something to pay attention to. If you need help with the strategy, please reach out to us. Go to jbmconsultants.org. We have an innovation strategy development program for you. We also have um, basic. basic innovation workshops. We have basic cryptocurrency workshops. We have career coaching. If you want to get your people in the right mindset, you know, if you need more people to actually do the things that we're talking about, we so have talent you, you need more, you need more weather men and weather women when it comes to the e- yeah. economic climate, we can help you with that. We have talent acquisition services. And then we also have exclusive membership packages for you it's if you want to subscribe and have us on call we have that as well so please check out jbmconsultants.org and look at the services that we have and we have merch oh i was gonna say that this oh, time sorry. i didn't <laughs> forget i love I our, merch. I, love our it's, merch I i haven't forgot okay i, I know i was just about to say that sorry. i was going to say if you are an individual consumer you know Please check out our career coaching services. If you're looking to get right in this economy, if you're like, hey, I just need to get right, I need to get my bag up, reach out to us. We have career coaching services. We also have a 90-day program that'll help you make that pivot and get you where you want to go, provide you with some actionable steps to be more successful, to grow your bag, to grow your um, professional career professional career, and to make you more valuable in the labor force. So please go to jbmconsultants.org. And on top of that, we have merchandise. Yes. So if you like what you've been seeing and you want to support some way, if you want to wear the J on your chest, you know, that says I'm an innovator, I'm an educator, I'm a facilitator, I'm, I'm here for sustainable wealth, I'm here for um, prosperity, for businesses, I'm, I am an innovator, please check out the JBM Consultants 
store. So go to jbmconsultants.org backslash store and we have merchandise there for you. I'm very excited. Please check it out. Excited. Order whatever you have. We also got our first edition Innovator Caps, which is really yes. cold. Ooh, I think everybody's going to love that one. I think it's pretty nice. Very nice. It's very nice. And then also stay tuned. Stay tuned. Keep watching because we are going to have some special guests some special in-house guests, guests, in-house guests that we will be interviewing for you guys for the benefit of you. So we want to thank you guys for thank tuning you so in. Much. Anything else to add? No, just make sure that you check out www.jvmconsultants.org. Mm-hmm. Yes, I said www. Yeah. <laughs> I said that. He hates it when I say www. Say w. See, there's no but, www up here. Well, it's www. So you know who See, made the banner. Because you can see, if she made it, it'd be like WWW okay. and, and it'd be all small. the other thing that I want to make sure I point you to, because Jonah didn't mention it, is that Jonah actually offers a cryptocurrency course. Yes, I do. So if you just want to take the one-off course, which you can get online, yes. you should definitely go check out his course. Exactly. And then um, you can get that quick and dirty of understanding what cryptocurrency is. But I think that we've described all of our offerings. How do they get to your course, Jonah? You go to CryptoCentral.com, not dot .teachable.com. So CryptoCentral. So it's spelled C R Y P T O S E N T I A L. Crypt Essential dot teachable teach A B L E at the end dot com. And you'll see it pop up there. You can get it real cheap. It's about the price of a haircut. It yes. tells you what cryptocurrency is, why it's important, how to get started, how to get your own, and how Check to pay your taxes. It gives it gives you everything simple and fast. Check and it out. You can do it and you can complete the course in under an hour. So it's not time consuming. It's not going to be a bunch of knowledge that's way over your head. I'm going to give you the basics so you're prepared for when cryptocurrency does actually go mainstream yeah. and start impacting the world in ways that we can't yeah. even imagine right and now. And the last thing I would say, Jonah, is that check us out because I am on Twitter. Yes. I'm on Twitter. I mm. am at busy, B-U-S-Y underscore E-D-B. That's yes. me on Twitter. Check me out. Mm-hmm. Where are you on and Twitter? I'm on Twitter at busy J. So that's B-U-S-Y underscore J-A-Y-Y. Two Y's. They made me get two Y's because somebody was smart and bought the other one. But it's okay. Just follow the J and that'll be me. So thank yeah, you check guys. Us out. Thank you guys for thank tuning you. in. And also, please, please reach out to us about what we we're Feedback. talking about. Because I know this can get like a real touching, real political. And we kind of wanted to stay away from, you know, from the political and bipartisan yeah. aspect yeah. of it. We just that. wanted to give you a business perspective Educate. on what this what the trade word is what it means for people and how you can um how you need to check the weather pretty much and understand what's going on so you can better operate you can yeah. better innovate and you can better educate yourself on what to do but if you for whatever reason like oh no you we need this trade war whatever feel free to reach out to me okay because i'm or cool me. or or busy e busy j or busy e it doesn't matter we're cool we're always calm and we're always collected because at the end of the day we know it's not personal it's, it's just, just business. business take care